It's that time again, so crack open that binder and let's look individually at each card from Jungle and decide which ones were good, which ones were bad, and most importantly, which ones were underrated. Jungle was a huge deal when it released because it completely changed the way that the TCG was played. It added cards that were fit into every single deck in the format, creating a lot of archetypes on its own. So to get it out of the way, I think that the best cards in this set are Clefable, Mr. Mime, Scyther, and Wigglytuff. These cards get a lot of love, a lot of hype, and a lot of usage, and rightly so. They're all great cards. And the worst card in this set? Uh, right on. It's probably right on. But it is still astounding to me to this day how underrated a lot of cards in this set are. So let's start with a simple one, Sea King. On the surface, it doesn't look like there's a lot going on with this card. You don't really realize how magical it can be until you're playing it in a water deck. Being able to attack for 1 energy for 10 on turn 1 with Goldeen, and then turn 2 evolving into Sea King and dealing 30 damage for only 2 energy is very efficient for any Pokemon card. When it was only base set and jungle out, people were running Rain Dance with Magikarp and Gyarados, which was a huge risk because those Magikarps were so fragile. And it was very risky because you were putting this 30 HP Pokemon out there just hoping that by next turn it has not only survived, but that you've got the setup available in your hand to Pokemon Breeder into Blastoise and also get that Gyarados into your hand to evolve that Magikarp. So it wasn't very consistent. It was fast when it worked, but if it didn't work, you lost the game. The more stabilizing, consistent way to play in my book was to include a 2-2 line of Sea King in Rain Dance. That way you could start attacking on turn 2 for 30 damage, which is a decent chunk, whether or not you had your complete setup or not. Sea King would be susceptible to Electabuzz like the rest of the deck, but your opponent would have to choose whether they wanted to knock out this tiny little powerhouse that's your active, or try to target one of the Magikarp that's on your bench. If they knocked out the Magikarp, then your Gyarados setup would be messed up for the time being, but then they're setting themselves up for a plus-powered Waterfall knockout next turn. But Sea King was not included in any Rain Dance builds because it didn't benefit from having just a ton of energy stacked on top of it, and that was kind of the point of Rain Dance. Plus, people did opt for speed, so they really just wanted to have a Blastoise and a Gyarados on turn two and everything else didn't really matter. Sea King remains a great card for any water type deck and it's a great card for beginners. You just attach energy and attack. There's not extra text to read and you don't have to flip a fucking coin just to deal some damage. Jungle Sea King is simple, clean, beautiful, and I love it. Moving on to Dodrio. It resists Hitmonchan, although it's weak to Electabuzz, but it's got free retreat. So it's more like a souped up version of Farfetch from Base Set, which, if you've watched my other video, I also thought was underrated. But it also has a Pokemon power that gives your other Pokemon either free retreat or a more manageable retreat. The reason that Scyther was so valuable in Haymaker is because it resisted Hitmonchan and had free retreat. The only difference here is that Dodrio's a stage one instead of a basic, so it seems more than worth it to have it also give your other Pokemon a lower retreat cost. I would even argue that Rage is a better three energy attack than Slash. Really the only thing holding it back for players was that it was a stage one, and because speed was so important in the base era format, that people would rather just throw down a Scyther and have all these benefits than wait for a Dodrio on turn two. Now, Dodrio did see a lot of play in later formats, like Prop 15, where the amount of trainers you could have was limited, and so players didn't really want to have to use Switch, so they just included Dodrio in all their decks. And it did see quite a bit of play in Rogue decks in the base Neo format, but overall, its legacy as a jungle card is completely overshadowed by Scyther, and that's why it's on this list of underrated cards. This next one is a bit of a cheat, but I feel they are all equally underrated. That's why I'm going with all three of the Jungle Eeveelutions. These three cards together had their own Tier 2 archetype in Eevitron that was surprisingly good. I think a lot of people would be shocked to see how well this deck actually fares in the base set era metagame. 
but it's a deck that even longtime players may not have even heard of because each evolution was overshadowed by another card of the same type. Flareon had Arcanine, Jolteon was overshadowed by stuff like Raichu, and Vaporeon was overshadowed by everything that's in Rain Dance. The reason I think that they're all so underrated though is because they are incredibly splashable. Thanks to the promo Eevee, they could evolve the same turn as you evolve any of your other Pokemon, and Quick Attack only costs two colorless energy, so it's your deck having trouble with some fire types, splash in one Eevee and one Vaporeon. Need a tech for some Venusaur mirror matches? Just include Flareon in the build, that way you can use Quick Attack off of those grass energy and deal some super effective damage. The Evolution card suffered from the same kind of problem as Dodrio, where people just didn't want to use Stage 1s even if it was just as a tech. If it detracted from the core speed of a deck, people were not willing to use them. Which is why the only place you ever really saw them was in Eevee-tron, where Eevee was the core speed of the deck. Unlike the Evolutions, though, this next card is one that I've never seen used in a single deck and admittedly, I've never used it in a deck either. The potential for Jungle Rapidash is definitely there. Before Magmar, Rapidash was the only defensive fire type with agility. Even when up against Rain Dance, agility gives you a chance. So for any mono fire build, I don't know why you wouldn't include at least a 2-2 line of Rapidash. That being said, I don't have any personal experience with how effective this card is, mostly because in later formats it was really outdone by Blaine's Rapidash. But just based on Free Retreat and the effect of agility, Rapidash doesn't really deserve to be a forgotten fire type of the base set era. These final two really rustle my jimmies and how underrated they are. The first we'll talk about is Kangaskhan. The base set era was all focused around big basics, Chansey being one of the big ones because it had 120 HP so it was really difficult to kill, but Kangaskhan gets left behind and 90 HP on a basic is still huge, especially when it has an attack for one energy that gives you even more draw power, which is another staple of this format is the more cards you can draw, the faster you can win. And Comet Punch, though a little risky because of the coin flips, is still on par with Chansey's Double Edge because Kangaskhan's not destroying itself in order to deal damage. Part of the threat of Kangaskhan was you didn't know how much damage it was going to deal, so you didn't really know how to prepare your active Pokemon. It could deal anywhere between 0 and 80 damage as early as turn 2. Kangaskhan is a great lead Pokemon because it's helping with your setup on turn 1 with Fetch, and with Fetch, you're increasing the likelihood of getting a double colorless energy or a plus power that you may need next turn to power up Comet Punch and go ahead and start dealing damage quickly. Even in the Prop 15 format, where this card went from pretty good to incredible, it still didn't see a lot of play. When you take away or limit a player's ability to use Bill or Oak, that draw power's gone, and so you really have to rely on Kangaskhan to fill up your hand. It's a card that could quickly switch from support to lead attacker in a deck. The reason I don't include it in more of my personal builds is because I hate flipping coins for attacks. I much prefer to have solid damage that I can bank on. When I do use Kangaskhan, it's as a spongy support card in something like Wigglytuff Do The Wave decks, where you may not want to use a placeholder Pokemon like Mysterious Fossil or Clefairy Doll. You'd rather have one that can actually sponge up more damage and also help out the deck by using attacks like Fetch for your early game while you're getting your Wigglytuff set up on the bench. So while we're on the topic, let's go ahead and move to not only the most underrated card of jungle, the most underrated card in the entire base set era format, Big Licky. Also got 90 HP, so it's a great sponge, especially against Mewtwo, Mime, and Alakazam. Tungrat makes it even more valuable as a stall card, as it can buy you entire turns at a time while still dealing chip damage for only one energy, meaning that you can splash this into any deck. Any deck! And if you look across the decks on my channel, you see that I put Lickitung in a lot of stuff because it's just so useful, especially as a stall card. And a lot of people are gonna say that it's just a budget version of Chansey, 
Lickitung is so much better than Chansey because it does not give a shit about energy removal. You can tongue grab anytime you want to during the game as long as you have one energy in your hand. When people use Chansey as a sponge, it's never with the intent of putting energy on it and actually having it attack. Lickitung can sponge almost as well, but with a great annoying one energy attack. I've been harping on about how great Big Licky is for years and years, and I finally got some validation from a Jay Witz video from a few months ago that I'll link down in the description, but basically, Puka and Jason Klazinski, two of the best Pokemon TCG players of all time, got together and played some base fossil format and learned together that Lickitung is indeed the best Pokemon in the base fossil format. So people can go on and on all they want about Blastoise, Hitmonchan, Electabuzz, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, Lickitung may be the most underrated card of all time. Of all time! Now I want to hear from you guys. What are your favorite cards from Jungle? What cards do you think are overhyped, underhyped? Regale me with tales that you've used Lickitung and realized the same truths as I. If you want to find me on the socials, those are all linked down in the description. While you're at it, go ahead and give that Jaywitz video a watch. I always like to promote other Pokemon YouTubers that I can actually tolerate. And Jaywitz always puts out really high quality content. I really enjoy his channel. You know that there's an underrated fossil video coming soon, so stay tuned for that. And until then, bye.